five Sundays of prosperity, you know, last week we couldn't close. So today is like the closure of everything. Praise God. Just sit your, take your seat. Oh,
it releases life in you. Mm -hmm. We have this same spirit of faith that is described in the scripture when it says, first I believe, then I spoke in faith. So we also first believe, then we speak in faith. Joshua chapter 1 verse 5. Okay. New King James Version. No man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. He says, I will not leave you, nor forsake you. I will not leave you, nor forsake you. I will not leave you, nor forsake you. You must know the pressure of life, challenges of life, disappointment, rejection, all of them that you can think of, if they are summed up in one word, it's just to stop you. When there is an attack on your heart, attack on your mind, attack that you feel like giving up. These are the vices that Satan wants to use to stop you. So, there are weapons Satan uses when it comes to trying to subject the believer to the point to give up. Satan has all manner, and I'm going to mention some of them. One, he uses guilt. When you don't feel adequate, when you don't feel good enough, he uses guilt. Some of the things you have been through, experiences you've ever had, you've repented of them, but Satan is still bringing them before you. Two, he uses persecution. But you must also know that Jesus said to his disciples, he said, no one who has followed me that will not get lands, that will not get children, that will not get husband, that will not get wife, that will not get mothers, fathers. But he end there, he said with persecution. So persecution is part of the deal. The next is disappointment. When people you saw trust disappointed you, these are the things to stop you. Do you remember the case of Joseph? He was so disappointed by those he called his own family. They sold him into slavery. That's the highest form of discouragement that anybody can get. Discouraged, you should be discouraged with life. Discouraged with connecting with people. Speaking with people, trusting people. These are all the things that Satan uses to stop believers. Pressure. When you are so pressured in your office, pressured in your workspace, pressured everywhere, you must understand that they are all the things that devil is using to stop you. The state of helplessness where you feel that nobody is there to help you. The woman, the man that was found at the pool of Bethsaida for 38 years. He feel, felt so helpless and his own case was so prolonged. For 38 years, he couldn't find anybody to help him. Anytime Satan brings you to that point where you feel so helpless, you must understand that you have God. That's why I sang the song we sang before we just started, that God is your helper. You are not walking alone. I, 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 I don't know whether what I am saying is making sense to someone. Satan wants to bring you to the point where you feel so helpless. And Satan wants you to put your mind on men. No one wants to help me. No one wants to support me. No help from family. You are not helpless. You are not helpless. It's actually a mindset. It's actually a mindset. That's why that man, even when Jesus appeared to the man and said, do you want to be healed? He said, I have no man. Because in his heart, help can only come from whenever someone is willing to put him in the bedside. Hopelessness. These are the tools. Business failures. Career challenges. 
loss of jobs. When we talk about loss of job, no growth in career. You are in a one spot. You are not growing. You are nothing is happening. Business is not working. You have been in a place. They are paying you self salary for three years, four years, five years. Nothing is working. These are the things Satan is trying to use to stop you from entering into your next level. An unstoppable believer is one who is wise enough to understand that Satan never plays fair. Anytime you see Satan, you must understand that Satan never plays you know, fair. Anytime Satan wants to fight, he fights with everything that is available to his disposal. And that is one of the reasons you must be careful with your words. Mm. I love the way the scripture puts it in that second Corinthians 7 from the uh, 4 verse 7 in partial translation. He said we are like common clay. So we are like common clay. It's not about what the clay, the outer looks like. It's about the content. What is in the content? What is the content in the jar? He said, but we we are not just the common clay. He said, because we carry this glorious treasure. There is something glorious you are carrying. There is a deposit that you have on your inside. So whenever you don't look at the container, the container may look fragile. Yes, the man that may achieve that may look fragile, may look small, may be a man of a little stature, but there is something a deposit. You have to look inside to know what God has deposited. He said, but we carry this glorious treasure. There is a, a content that the container is carrying. It is in the ability for the content for you to understand what you have on your inside. That's actually where the miracle stands. If you watch that scripture, scripture, he said there is this glorious treasure within. There is something you have within. There is something you have within. There is something you possess within. Look at your neighbor and say, you have something. Say to your neighbor, you have something. Say to your neighbor, you carry something treasure. It's inside. He said, stop looking for it out in, in the outward. It's inside. Shout Amen. Let's look at people that went through challenges, but they were not stopped. Number one is Joseph. Who is Joseph? The eleventh son of the man called Jacob. Sold into slavery. But one thing I discovered about this young man, each time he shares his vision, his brothers will attack him. Each time he shares his vision, his dreams, they will attack him. But one thing I noticed is that he kept dreaming. I asked you this question. Do you stop because people try to stop you? Do you stop moving because people stopped you? Do you stop because you, you try to invest in that business and it's not working? Do you stop because someone discouraged you? What discouragement do you? See, let me tell you. Sometimes you are looking for encouragement from outside. But God is saying to you, there is a treasure you have on your inside. When you discover what you possess on your inside, when things are not working, you look within again. You said, people don't know this man. I'm the one that knows this man. It may not look like where we are going, but I know where I'm going to. God wants you to look at the inside. That's why the man called David. He said, I, David, I encourage myself. Sometimes I'm looking for encouragement outside. But God is saying, the only thing that will help you to encourage yourself is ability for you to discover what you have on your inside. And ability for you to be able to identify the things you have on your inside. That's actually what will help you to be able to encourage yourself. Why people can encourage themselves is simply because they have not found anything. Can anything good come out from Nazareth? Because people from there must have had a line of thought that there is nothing good that can come out from them. But, 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 but can I shock you? Even when the ascension of Israel, they went there, they said, in their eyes, they commonize themselves. They commonize their gift. They commonize their God. They commonize the person who asked them to leave the land of Egypt to the land flowing with milk and honey. They commonize that God. Let me tell you, don't commonize what God has given you. Mm. I don't know whether 
I'm talking to someone this morning. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And that person again, I'll be using male and female. In the Bible, it's Esther. Slave girl. And they said to her, Hadassah, they said, there will be a beauty contest. How do you survive in a place where you are a slave and you are about to compete with the owners of the land? How do you gain your self-esteem when you discover that you are a slave? Not that you are even living with your father. You are living with your uncle. So, if you are even living with your father, there is some certain level of leverage. You are living with your uncle and you are a slave. And they are saying, come and join. And you have the effrontery to join such. You must first of all, see what nobody is seeing. The problem we have is that there is something that you have that nobody can see. It is you that can see it. Because you are the one that possesses those content. Many of us don't know what we have. And that is why the Bible says, he who has not, even that he has, shall be taken from him. And he who, <laughs> who has, so anytime you recognize what you have, another will be given. Anytime you discover that another has been added, another will be given. The more you discover, the more they give you. So the question is that, have you identified the one you have? They have stopped you because the challenges of life is to really to know whether you are aware of what you have. If you hear me very well, if you carry your passport and you approach immigration officer, they open it, you are traveling. They say, what is your name? Do you become afraid? You don't become afraid. You will mention the name that you have exactly there. But what many of us do is that when life presents up a challenge and you present, they say, who are you? You become afraid. Self-esteem, you run into your shit. Once you do like that, that's why even in America they will ask some questions that some people were deported not because they committed crime, but because they lack the ability to speak to the person talking to them. Do you know that sometimes people enter business class and they sit with Oyibo, white, they're in business class. A woman will say, you're not supposed to sit here because they look at you, you are young. You're not supposed to be in the business class. You're supposed to be in the economy because you are black. And they query you, you become afraid because they are white and you are black. It means you don't know what you have. Are you listening to me? They suck you. You say they don't know who I am. Oh, see, you don't reject a believer. You don't reject the daughter of a king. You are a king's treasure. You don't know the, whose son you are. You are not the son of an ordinary man. Anybody that says no to you is saying no to good things. So whenever it looks as if people push you, you say to yourself, I'm unstoppable. I, 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 know, I know who I am. I may give to another person. I may give to another company. I may give to another organization. You dust your destiny. Let me tell you, life will treat you the way you treat yourself. Life will not give you an exalted seat when you have chosen to go back. Stop going backward. Take the front row. Say to yourself, I know who I am. In my father's house, there is a place for me. I'm a child. Sometimes you say to yourself, I can't be stranded. I, I, I tell you, I have traveled. In cities where I don't know anybody, I say, my father, you must get someone here, I must know someone before I leave. I can't 
be stranded. You just get to a point. You don't know. Everything you know, God will raise help us. Stop looking at yourself helpless. Are you listening to me? Oh my God. Oh my God. See, let me tell you with man's gift. When man gives you a gift, they have every tendency they will take it. But when God gives you, he can't take it. He gave you gift of singing. Nobody can take it. He gave you gift of being a businessman and woman. The gift God gave you, nobody can take it. They gave the man called Joseph, coat of many colors. He was wearing it, making guy. The day the brothers dealt with him, they turned that clothes. Another man collected it. Seek to know that which God gives that nobody takes. Man can give you position, but they have the ability to take it. But there is something that God gives to you. And that is the gift you possess. Is that gift that when you nurture it, when you work on it, is that gift that makes you unstoppable? Is someone hearing me? There are things that Satan arranged to stop us. Potiphar's wife couldn't stop him. What is Potiphar's wife? She accused accusation. Accuse her. Don't al- say to your neighbor, don't allow accusation stop you. Say when they accuse you, first of all, understand who you are. Joseph look at himself. <laughs> I can't be a rapist. So I'm not. So he went there and stayed. Why you get depressed because they said so? It's because you are subscribing to what they have said. <laughs> Anytime they say something that want to get into your mind and your heart, you first of all say, but you go to the mirror, start the mirror. You say, but Frank, is that who you are? That when they get into your system, it can be frustrating. Are you listening to me? How to stay unstoppable? Number one, number one, know God's blueprint. Know God's blueprint. Understand those night dreams. Joseph was having night dreams. He had the first one. See, scriptures are very powerful. In the book of Genesis 37, verse 7, the Bible said that he had the first dream. The first dream was the work he will do. The second dream, he kept having more. The first was work. The second was the time he will reign. Sometimes before you will reign, you will walk. You didn't hear me. He said, can you go to from verse 5? Let me show, show them something. The first was work. The first was what? He said, now Joseph had a dream. He told it to his brothers and they hated him even more. Continue. So he said to them, please, hear this dream which I have dreamt. There were binding sheep in the field. Then behold, my sheep arose and also stood up. And indeed your sheep stood all around and bowed down to my sheep. Please go to from verse 3. Let me show them something from verse 3. This is, now, Israel loved Joseph more than all his children because he was the son of his old age. Also, he made him a tonic of many colors. Four. But when his brother saw that his father loved him more than his brother, they hated him and could not speak peace, peacefully to him. Number five. Now Joseph had a dream and he told it to his brothers. So the first one was in King James Version. He says they were walking. There was walk, binding of sheep is a walk. So before you enter into the season, that season of reigning, if you read the scripture that it's called that the second dream he shared with them, he said, was talking where they were bowing down to him. Before people will bow to you, you must have walked. No God's blueprint. Sometimes our problem is that we don't know the blueprint. There is a walk. Sometimes those walk will not come. They will not come fair. 
and you will walk with people. Are you listening to me? Know God's blueprint. You can't be ready when God is saying you should walk. So sometimes people want to reign when they have not walked. And that becomes a problem. Number two. Understand divine timings. Luke 19, 44b. Because thou knowest not the time of thy visitation. No divine timing. There is a time for divine visitation. There is a time for divine visitation. When the time for divine visitation comes, nobody, no force on earth can stop you. Luke 19.44b No hell can stop you. No demon can stop you. There is a time of visitation. You must understand your divine timing. The time for you to walk. The time for you to, to walk. The time for you to build. If you miss your time, sometimes it will take grace for it to come back. Understand divine timing. Don't joke with when you and what people do when God is taking you through times. Some of us will minimize ourselves, underrate ourselves, just for people to like us. You undermine yourself, you underrate yourself, you recite your dreams so that people can accommodate you. Say to your neighbor, don't recite your dream just for people to like you. Say you are already liked. Heaven likes you. Shout amen. amen. Hmm. Number three, stay focused. Stay on the measure in your life. Whatever you focus this on, magnifies. Whatever you give your attention, expands. Whatever you give your attention, enlarges. You see, focus. Focus on yourself. Focus on your life. Focus on improving yourself. Focus on who you become. One of the things I discovered that Joseph did was that he focused on his, on, on in his own life. He found a ministry of dream interpretation. He focused on living the life of integrity, ensuring that he doesn't lose his value. Focus on the thing that makes you valuable. So Joseph focused on dream interpretation. Focus on being exceptional. So if he's in the prison, he must be an exceptional prisoner. If he's sweeping, he must be exceptional cleaner. Focus. Because once you are distracted, you struggle to find yourself. Number four, be courageous. Face your giants. Face your giants. I saw something in the Bible. The Bible talks about the four lepers. They said to themselves, if we stay here, we die. If we go into the city, we die. He said, why stay here? He said, let us therefore go in at once. If we die, if we perish, we perish. Sometimes what you need in life is to face your fears. Something you need is to face your fears. Some of you, there are people that has been in your mind. Die their number. Engage them on that Instagram. Make, take some big moves. Make some big, take some big steps. Do something you've not done before. Be courageous enough. Life, people that become giants in life are not the chicken hearted. There is something I noticed about, about the ego. The ego has only one bear that attacks the ego. The only, only one bear that attacks the ego is the raven. It individually perches on their neck. So when the raven perches on the neck of an ego, ego doesn't bother. The only way ego can fight back is to take a flight. As ego start ascending, it will get to a height. Raven will lose oxygen. It is time for you to find yourself or you die. There are people that are trying to choke you. Ascend higher heights. Be courageous enough to take some level. Give them some certain height that they can't be able to contain. The more you climb, the 
the more naturally they fall out. And can I shock you? A time will come in your life that season has changed. People that used to be your friends, you are no longer their friends, you now become their mentor. Why? Because when season changes, some certain things changes. Take some steps. I have some of my classmates that used to be my classmates in secondary school. But now they say I'm their pastor. They say our pastor. They come, they say, Pastor, pray for me. You must understand that it takes courage to ascend some heights. Do not pay attention to heaven. Say to your neighbor, so have some heights. Take some heights. He said naturally. Say to them, naturally. Heaven will disappear. Shout the loudest amen. Oh my God. Oh my God. Number five. Your dreams should stay alive. See, what makes dreams work is not because you keep dreaming. It's making them stay alive. Some people have some dreams, but these dreams are dead. How? You know you have a dream, but they are not in your heart. Sometimes say, ah, can I remember? How can you be trying to remember your dreams? Stay alive. Let your dreams stay alive. Burning in your heart. Anytime you are talking it, you are talking it with your chest. High. Lifted. Shoulder high. Let your dreams stay alive. How do I know? Genesis 37 verse 9. But Joseph dream still another dream. And told this his brothers. He never allowed anybody to shut him. They shut him. We are angry with him. They were not pleased that he's sharing his dream. And he dreamed yet another. When they are trying to stop you, keep dreaming. Keep it alive. Document it. Follow them. I have dream. A dream. dream a dream more. And behold, the sun and the moon and the 11 stars. They are talking about the one you shared where you were walking. Now you are bringing the one. You must understand the place of dream. Let it stay alive. Is someone hearing me? The last point I will mention that will lead us to pray this morning is know your prophecy and use your prophecy. Know your prophecy and use your prophecy. You have to know the prophecy over you. There is a example we used to sing. You know, I cannot fail my God. I must fulfill. Do, do you sing? Do you mean that song? There is prophecy over me. You used to sing it, right? Mm -hmm. Don't worry, we sing it now. Where we have one. But let me ask you. You know that there is a prophecy over you. But what are you doing with the prophecy? Your prophecy is not to make you happy. Your prophecy is for you to use it. When the man Elijah gave a prophecy, I had the sound of abundance of rain. He didn't go back to his house. He taught us the principle. He climbed the mountain. He bowed his knee and he begins to pray. It's one thing to prophesy. It's another thing to know what you do because every prophecy will require a midwife. Every prophecy will require a midwife. The Bible talks about Mephibosheth. He said Mephibosheth, they came back to Mephibosheth. But there was a careless nurse, careless midwife, who was trying to, to help, and the baby fall and broke his, his two legs. And he has a bad leg all through his life. Because the midwife happens to be a careless woman. Some of us, our destinies are limping because we are careless midwives. Some things that need to come to you are not coming well. Because have you called someone? Say, why are you always calling me when I'm angry? This person will be so nice to you. Say, call me tomorrow by 9 o'clock. You, you forgot, you now call by 9.30. That's when someone got, devil will do everything to show, ensure that that person got, gets angry by 9.15. After calling by 9.30, he said, don't call me again. Get out of my phone. He said, ah, it was not this man that was nice to me. You did not midwife your new season. There are things you do with your prophecy. Can I give you a scripture? First Timothy chapter 1, verse 18 to 19. The Passion Translation. 
the brief version translation. First Timothy 1, 18 to 19. I would like everybody to see it. Let me say this. Stay with your prophecy. Pray with your prophecy. Those days in the village as I was growing up, I know some basic that they do that they will be great in life. Some of them never get to any point till date. Why? They had the prophecy, but what you do with your prophecy matters. Say to your neighbor, it's not enough, it's not good enough for you to hear it. What you do with it matters a lot. Can we read that scripture? So Timothy, my son, I am entrusting you with this responsibility in keeping with the very first prophecies that we have spoken over your life and now I'm in the process. Set your neighbor, process. process. Is it process? Something can go wrong when you are in the process. Are you listening to me? Yes, something can go wrong when something is in the process. He says, fulfillment of this great work of ministry. In keeping with the prophecy spoken over you, with this encouragement, use your prophecies as weapons, plural. <laughs> uh, uh, you use your prophecy as your weapon. Satan, you can't stop me. I am not called to live I, we sang a song when we started, and I cannot settle for the less. Are you settling for the less? He said, use your prophecy as a weapon. Weapon. As you waste spiritual warfare. Ah! By faith. And with a clean conscience. For there are many who rejected these virtues and are now destitute of the true faith. They rejected the virtue of using prophecy as a weapon. And they didn't get anything. So it looks as if that faith is nothing. It looks as if that trusting God and believing God never works. Because they refuse to use the virtue of using your prophecy. Are you listening to me? Don't receive prophecy and you go home. No, man. You just stay and say, let me wait. You receive your prophecy. You do like Elijah. God gave us a language. Sometimes when things change, change language. Jesus got to raise a, do- a girl that was dead. He said, close the door. Tapita kumi. Another language. Why were you not speaking in a language everybody will hear? He spoke in a different language. Some season will require change of language. You pick your prophecy. Seven days. You are on one thing. And God begins to flood your heart with your with scriptures. And you say, Satan, you come with me in this battle. Either I have this now or never. Do you know that we say, this is the generation that seek your face? Oh, Jacob. What was Jacob? Jacob was a man who never saw the blessing spoken over his life. He missed the opportunity because one that is that the Father has spoken. But there must, there must, there is a warfare. Anything that is spoken over you mm, is under contention. So the Bible says he was lying down. He saw ladder from heaven down to earth. Angels were going from he- from earth to heaven. They need to hear you, but he was sleeping. Do we have people who are sleeping in destiny? Do we have people who there are prophecies but they are sleeping? He said, when Jacob woke up, he said, God was here and I knew it not. And he spent the next 21 years of his life struggling, living in pain, trying to get something done. The day he was returning, he got to that place. Same angel came again. He grabbed the angel. He said, I will not let you go until you bless me. What do you do with your... See, life reward people who insist. You've not been insisting. That's why nothing is happening. You've not been insisting. I insist. The Bible says, and I said, entreated the Lord. He was in the place of prayer. He insisted. Do you watch over your prophecies? What do you do with your prophecies? Some destinies can be stopped. Because a closed mouth, like the popular saying, is a closed life, is a closed destiny. Don't close your life because you refuse to talk. Speak! And not to speak to men, but to speak to immortals. To speak to the spirit beings. To speak to the angels. Some, there are angels that are meant to implement 
but they have not picked a command from you. What do you do with your prophecy? How can you be living like a man that God has invested so much, but you are living destitute of nothing? How can you be in one corner for so long and you think it is normal? There are things God can do for you and there are things you must do for yourself. As in the God, you rise. You say, I refuse to be sleeping away my destiny. And then we come, you pick your Bible. Have you come to the point where you have so prayed that your two knees are weak? You can you now sit down with your Bible open and you put your two hands between your two legs. And you are saying, Lord, help me. Have you come to that point? Maybe you have not prayed those kind of prayer. I, 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 I come here today to, 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 to just punch your heart. Stop wasting your time. Let them not stop you. Let the things people do to you not stop you from praying. You shouldn't be stopped. Your prayer should be going constantly. Use your prophecy. Use your prophecy. Ah, I saw something in, in Job chapter 14, verse 14, KJV. He said, all the days of my life will I wait till my change come. That's the prayer of a man who is insisting I can't die without God. Fulfilling what he has said over me. All the days of my life will I wait till my change come. Who is staying in the place of prayer? Yeah, and saying, Job 14, 14, please. Job, 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 Job. Praise God. All the days of my life will I wait till my change come. Who is saying this morning, Father, I wait till my change come. Who is saying it to the Lord? All the days of my life, can you just rise to your feet? I want you to just take out some few moments. In the next three minutes, just begin to pray. I insist today. I insist today. I insist today. I insist today. I press in. I press in. Can you just use your prophecy? Use your prophecy. Use your prophecy as your weapon.
Someone you command your money. You have so labored, but nothing is working. Hey, has that commanded the money since thy days? And God is desperate to know his place. You said it is time. The time of struggle is over. I want to give you the next two minutes. I want you to begin to speak the morning of your life. Open up in the name of Jesus. He said, for sorrow may last for the night, but joy cometh in the morning. I declare my morning has come. My morning has come. My morning has come. My morning has come. This is my morning. This is my morning. It's my morning season. It's the Himalaya. A new day has come. A new season has come. Today, I speak to everyone under the sound of my voice that there are prophecies over your life, but they are yet to be fulfilled. Today, in the name of Jesus, I call it for your testimony. I declare you are in your season of manifestation. Manifestation. Your morning has come. Your day has come. Your season has come. Your time of visibility has come. Your time for global.
Hey!